One of the things I love most about YouTube is just the wealth of information and experience you get from creators across all areas of life. Now, I have a particular interest in aging well, and because of that, I've come to watch and appreciate the videos from fellow YouTuber Claudia Rolnick, whose Claudia Glows channel is just awash with great information on living well for longer. As part of her anti-aging regime, she takes daily longevity supplements. That's an area I'm fascinated in and wanted to find out more and bring you that information. So I'm pleased to tell you that we have collaborated to bring you this video in which Claudia sets out for me the main supplements she has researched and uses daily and what she believes they do for her. I just know that my viewers are going to be interested in, in what you have to tell us today. Um, I really enjoy and learn so much from your videos and particularly the ones around your supplement use um, because it is something I'm interested in but I don't really know where to begin other than you know I take a daily vitamin D supplement but that's about it so that's what we're going to focus on for our chat today. First of all can you tell us just a little bit about your background and how you became uh, so interested in the whole idea of, of anti-aging and longevity? Of course. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So I actually trained as a physician's assistant a long time ago. And when I went through my training, I already realized that rather than helping sick people get better, I wanted to work on the other end and help people not to get even sick in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I actually went on vacation after I finished my training to Los Angeles and never returned back to Germany. I trained in Germany and went back to school, became a personal trainer and yoga teacher. So I exchanged my stethoscope for dumbbells <laughs> and I have been doing personal training and yoga for the last 27 years. And so health and well-being has always been an interest of mine. But as I'm getting older, I see quite a few friends or a family of friends struggling with these things they think are normal as we age and it's something that I just didn't want to accept <laughs> that yeah. as we age that these age-related diseases and all these struggles just come along with it I don't believe that so that really made me do a lot of research on what can I do not to necessarily live longer which would be nice as well but not to necessarily live longer but to have that time I'm allowed on earth to be as quality as it can be and to feel as good and to look as good as I can. So that got me into doing a lot of research on different lifestyle choices. Exercise has always been a part of my life, but different lifestyle choices, different supplements and different external things we can do. So that's in a nutshell yeah. how I got there. So I turn 50 in February next year. Um, and I think we're we're kind of similar in age, are we? I'm 53. I'm going to be 54 in January. So it's that stage in life, definitely, where you have to put a little bit more work in and think about it a bit more about, um, you know, the, the lifestyle. And I find if I have, um, you know, as much as two glasses of wine, I practically can't get out of bed the next day, you know, completely unlike my 20s when I could party half the, the night. So you do notice these changes. What do you think is a kind of the, a, a priority, a game changer for you that you've tried? So first of all, I have to say what I always say, you know, supplements are just that, they're supplements, they're supplementation to the things we're already doing. So we have to have a foundation first, and that foundation is a nutrient-dense diet, you know, really making sure we get as many nutrients as we can from our food. Exercise, of course, I have to say that as a personal trainer, but, you know, exercise, there's nothing that replaces exercise. Mm. Prioritizing our sleep, working on our emotional health, that is all very important. So we can't expect to neglect these things and just throw some supplements on top and feel fantastic. That's not going to happen. But if we work on that foundation, then to add some supplements, I think, can make a huge difference. So we have to sort of look at our lifestyle, our diet, what could we benefit from? What are we possibly lacking? And then see, do we want to supplement that? It's also a good idea if we know our genes because that can help us further, but that's when it gets complicated. Mm. But as far as longevity supplements, so about two years ago, I started taking my first longevity supplement and that is NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. 
Wow. Which is a form. <laughs> that is a mouthful. Well, I'm not going to repeat that back. <laughs> it's, a, it's a form of vitamin B3, so niacin. And it is a precursor to a molecule we have in our bodies, in every cell in our body. And that, pre, that molecule is called NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's a very important molecule. Without it, we actually would be dead within 30 seconds. So it's very that. important. And it fuels many actions in the body, many metabolic functions in the body. But unfortunately, as we age, as with so many things when we age, mm -hmm. it declines rapidly. Mm -hmm. So this precursor, NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, feeds this molecule and helps it rise again. So that, that is something that can really help be helpful as we age, because we all feel that decline in NAD. Our energy sort of, you know, is lower. We don't recover as quickly. We don't sleep as well. So about two years ago, I started taking this precursor, NMN, and that is the supplement I don't ever want to be without. It's made such a big difference. Definitely. Um what form do you take that in? So I take it in a powder form. It comes in different forms. It comes in capsules. It comes in powder form. It comes liposomally. The delivery method is sort of controversial because some people want to sell it in a liposomal form saying it's better delivery, but all the studies done with it, <clears throat> excuse me, it was given to mice in their diet. So they didn't take it any fancy, in any fancy delivery mm -hmm. and they had great results. So okay. the powder form is really the cheapest. That's what I take. I take about a gram or one and a half grams, put it in a bit of water and drink it. I even give it to my dog every day. And I've seen incredible benefits for her as well. He's just turned to look at you behind. Hey, are you mentioning me there? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be 13 time. next week. And she just hiked up the mountains with us on vacation. So the NMN is making a big difference for her as well. So that for me is my favorite longevity supplement because I can feel immediate benefits from it. Now with that, it's good to take another supplement called TMG, trimethylglycine. Okay. Because as I mentioned, it is a form of vitamin B3, NMN. And it's speculated that forms of vitamin B3 can deplete methyl donors we have in our body, which are important for function. Can for, deplete, for our, what was that you said? Can deplete? They can deplete methyl donors. And okay. methyl donors we get from our diet and they're very important for our methylation cycle to work so for our detoxification for everything in our body to work well so vitamin b3 is speculated to deplete some of those so adding a methyl donor like tmg trimethylglycine while taking a vitamin b3 a form of vitamin b3 is a good idea and the tmg that i take with it also has other benefits it's good for the liver it's inexpensive so i take the two together Okay. And I take about, I take equal amounts. So I take, if I take one gram of NMN, I take one gram of the TMG. Okay. Um, what I might do is uh, just ask you to share what you take with me and I can link to it uh, in the video description so people can see what you're taking and possibly how much as well, because that's another issue. Where on earth do you begin with, you know, with, with these things which are so sort of new to us? How much do we know, do, do we take? That's a good question. And some of it, the company will have suggestions. Some of it is suggested yeah. through studies. Some of it is trial and error. So, but that's a really good question. Yeah. And it is all very new and it can be very confusing. Yeah. But so those two, if I, and I told you I'm in a hotel right now because our mm -hmm. apartment flooded. And the first, the first thing I grabbed were all my supplements. They're all lined up here. And if I had to grab just one supplement, that would be it, NMN and, well, NMN and TMG, because they work well together. I suppose the reason I haven't looked too heavily at that until this point is that I'm a little bit suspicious about, you know, when ingesting stuff and not knowing too much about it. And I've kind of been going for a more natural, eat well, drink plenty of water approach. But I mean, I know, you know, obviously my bones are aging, everything is aging and the energy depletion that you talked about, the hormonal changes as we age is why this is becoming particularly interesting to me and probably a lot of people watching as well. I mean, do you ever worry about the side effects? Do you ever experience any side effects from these supplements? 
Definitely. I'm actually quite sensitive. I am very sensitive to caffeine. I'm very sensitive to alcohol. So I don't drink. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink alcohol. I'm really sensitive. My husband always says I'm a sensitive flower. So I've experienced quite a few side effects from certain supplements and I just can't take them. Mm. With NMN, I've only experienced positive effects, no side effects at all. And the side effects reported, there really aren't any. It's, it's again, it's a form of vitamin B3. So most things I take are actually phytonutrients the things found in plants you know vitamin b3 is yeah. a, of course these are yeah. lab made supplements but it is something that naturally occurs in plants and food so most of the things i take are from phy- are phytonutrients so i'm not too worried about but even food we can react to food as well so i do think it's good to be aware of your sensitivities genes have a lot to do with it i have some gene mutations that make me more sensitive to certain supplements or caffeine for example so it is good to be aware. It's good to start slow. Mm-hmm. Also, it's good to talk to your doctor about it if you are thinking of taking anything new. And then just it, a lot of it is trial and error. But yeah. from I've talked to many of my viewers about NMN, and I would say 95% of them absolutely love it. <laughs> they say it has changed their life. Wow. There's 5% that either don't notice anything or maybe they're not taking enough or something else. My husband, for example, doesn't like it he doesn't notice anything with it he says it's snake oil so there is that five percent but most people absolutely love it and don't have side effects from it but like i said we're all different we have different genes we have different sensitivities so it can definitely happen and it has happened to me that i reacted negatively to things one of the other things i've I've, um noticed you talking about on your channel is senolytics if i got that right can you tell us a little bit more about about them and, and what they could do for us yeah, so synolytic compounds are phytonutrients, so nutrients found in plants, that can help clear out senescent cells. Now, a senescent cell is a cell, we also call them zombie cells. It's a okay. cell that stops dividing. So normally our cells, they divide and they multiply. These senescent cells, they stop dividing, but they don't die. And that becomes problematic because they secrete inflammatory cytokines. So they can affect other cells and make them dysfunctional as well. Senescence is something that happens our whole life, even when we are younger. But as we get older, more and more senescent cells are created and they just accumulate in our body. And that can cause to disease and inflammation and all kinds of things. So these synergy compounds, fisetin, for example, is one. Fisetin is found in many foods, such as strawberries. Fisetin is a very strong synergy uh, compound found in plants Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it they just go in there and eat up these synolytic cells sort of like pac-man so that is something i also take i take synolytic compounds such as fisetin now there are certain ways to take these compounds some people take them on a daily basis i do believe that some senescence is not necessarily a bad thing because Mm -hmm. senescence is for example what makes tumors not go further so some senescence is not a bad thing but we don't want too much of it. So I take okay. Fisetin only about four or five days out of the month. I take a high dose, about two grams. And then for the rest of the month, I don't take it. There was a study done in the Mayo, with the, at the Mayo Clinic where they did it that way and it worked beautifully. That, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, that makes me feel more comfortable taking something infrequently that can help like that than taking a lot of things every day. That's an approach too. You don't have to take everything every single day. Yeah. You could cycle your, your supplements. You could take something only every other day. Some people don't take them on the weekends. I think that's a that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, you don't have to necessarily and I I take every day because I don't want to be without it. But certain things like spice and I don't take every day. There are certain things I take some glutathione sometimes, which is a very strong antioxidant. I don't take that daily either. So there are yeah. certain things I take only occasionally. Definitely, you can do that. But along with synolytic compounds, I also take quercetin, which is another weaker synolytic compound, but it also has other benefits, such as it's anti-allergic, actually. It has great anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. So that is something I actually do take daily because it helps me with my nose not getting stuffy, but I take a smaller dose. Okay. And I mean, you are someone who um, eats a healthy, balanced diet, presumably lots of fruit and vegetable and plant fiber, but you still feel that the supplementation is important because of your age. 
Definitely. I mean, I, I know I was anorexic for two decades, so I know firsthand the importance of a nutrient dense diet. Yeah. I feel much better now at age 53 than I did at age 23 because I didn't eat back then. Back then, would I have taken any of these supplements? It wouldn't have made a difference. Mm. So yes, diet to me is very important and I really make sure that I eat as many nutrients as I can in a day. But I do think, first of all, the world we live in is not ideal anymore. Our soil is already depleted. So I don't think we get the minerals, the nutrients we need from our food like we necessarily did maybe 100 years ago. Mm. But I do think it is difficult to get everything from food. Most of us are magnesium deficient. Many even meat eaters are B12 deficient. So it's, I think it's quite challenging to get all the nutrients we need from food. And then certain nutrients such as NMN, to get enough vitamin B3 to actually stimulate my NAD production, that would be quite <laughs> challenging. So yeah. certain things that we have really great longevity studies on now that are found in food, but are challenging to get, challenging to get enough of to actually get the benefits. Those, I believe, are worth supplementing. But that's my opinion. You know, some people, they just want to get everything from their food. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really interesting and really helpful. And you have done um, videos on your channel, which I'll also link to on most of these things individually, haven't you? If we want to get more information from you. And I actually just recently included another supplement, a longevity supplement, which I just made a video on. And that ties into both of the things I just talked about. It ties mm -hmm. into NAD production as well as senescent cells. And that is epigenin. Epigenin okay. is, again, a polynutrient found in things such as chamomile or parsley and as we age as our NAD declines this enzyme rises this enzyme is called CD38 and we have found that CD38 is actually the main enzyme that gobbles up NAD and it also is involved in inflammation so it's not necessarily good to have it at high levels so inhibiting that enzyme can be quite beneficial to keep inflammation down and to keep those NAD levels up for us to feel good. So studies have found that this nutrient epigenin is really beneficial to inhibit CD38 production, which then keeps the NAD nice and high. And these studies have also found that CD38 is secreted by senescent cells. So cleaning up those senescent cells, taking some epigenin to keep that CD38 even a bit lower, can really be beneficial. Interesting. I mean, you've done a lot of research there. It's very, very clear. Um, but I, you know, I, I also always, I also always like to give my viewers an option. I don't say take the supplement because I take yeah. it. I, I like to see where is the supplement found or where is this particular compound found. Epigenin, for example, is found in parsley. Dried mm -hmm. parsley is quite rich in it. So you don't have to take a supplement. You could just eat dried parsley you could do a lot of dried chamomile. So it is possible to get these things from your diet. It's just what quantities do you have to consume? And is it at some point easier to just take a supplement? Yeah. For me, especially right now, living in a hotel room, it's easier to just take a supplement. But if I have a day where I feel like today I took enough in of the supplement in my diet, then I don't, then I don't consume it in supplement form on top of that. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, I mean, I've, I've looked a lot at gut health over the years. I'm a massive believer that your gut health impacts everything in your body from head to toe. But I don't take probiotics. I eat things like live yogurts and so on. But if I take anything with a probiotic on it, I, in it, I will be running to the toilet. Too much information for everybody. But it will really <laughs> upset my stomach. And I think that's because um, I eat so much plant fiber and fruit. These are just the things that I like to eat, luckily. Um, I think I'm probably just tipping the balance uh, and, and supplementation is excessive. So I, I think these are the things that we have to weigh up. Um, or it might not be the right strains for you, you know? It might be that I can take yeah. those and just, that's where we're all different and that's where sometimes trial and error just comes in. You know, I Absolutely. can't just look at, at somebody like you or myself and say, she's taking all of this, so I'm going to take all of this and I'm going exactly. to feel the same way. It doesn't happen. Unfortunately, yeah. there is going to be some trial and error and some, some of your own research too, you know, really look into it, look at the studies, look at is there something I could benefit from and don't just take it because it's advertised by somebody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Oh, Claudia, thank you so much. Um, and like I said, I'm going to um, include links to some of these videos where you're talking about these specifically, um, these supplements. But I really appreciate your time and I hope that we'll get together for a chat again soon. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really hope you enjoyed that. I so appreciate Claudia's research, openness and honesty. And if you want to check out her channel, there are links in the description below. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.